that was awesome, Veronica. Awesome. Amen. Well, guys, welcome again. This is Loving You to the Truth with Angelo and Veronica. Wow. And um, this message is really so appropriate for today. Wow. Because we're asking the question, what is love? <laughs> and it's perfect for Mother's Day because mothers, mothers. are love. That's mothers right. have this right. innate, perfect innate love. Yeah, that, that's mothers innate. might not be perfect, but their, their love is perfect. Absolutely. And uh, how great to celebrate Mother's Day without your children here. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Oh, wow. Well, can't help it if they're working and, and on vacation. So. so, all right. So, what is love? What is love? You know. What well, Hathaway has a song. Hathaway. Is it Hathaway? Hathaway? What is love? Baby, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. Let's join this group. heard that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is love? Yeah, my daughter, uh, Viviana, she sang about 500 times one day. Oh, just... oh, Lord. oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah she came out singing over and over. Oh, my you know, gosh. guys, I, you know, I believe that we all struggle with different things <laughs> in our lives. And I certainly have struggled with things in my life, you know, eating and, and uh, anger and frustration and all kinds of stuff. You know, if we want to be, if we want to be honest and we want to be real and we want to be transparent, then we have to expose those things that are in us, so that you know, you okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What happened? It's, go ahead. Oh, and um, so I just want to share that, I, and also want to share that each night when my wife and I pray, I ask God to deliver me from anger, from from frustration, Amen. from gluttony from all these things that come against us, you know, on, uh, yeah. in the flesh, you know, that bring carnality to our lives. And if we're going to step into a spiritual place with God, then we have to be honest with God, with the things that come against us. And we have to expose those things, or he'll expose them. So either we can expose them, or he can expose them. And I think it's easy if we expose them, rather than God exposing them. Because when God calls it into light, it's not very good. It's not very good. So, well, so, so there are many, so that's awesome. That's yeah, awesome yeah, because yeah. if you want deliverance, God is gonna deliver those who call upon his name. You know, and, honey, um, God is gonna save those who call upon his name, you and, know? And I just wanna say this. It, I mean, we've had, we've had many, many periscopes. And I'm sure a lot of people say, oh, that Angelo, he looks angry, or he's, he's mad, or he's whatever. And don't, I mean, maybe I was angry. But the Bible, I believe in righteous anger, too. I believe that That's there's right. anger that does not produce sin. See, see, the Bible says, be angry, but sin not. You know, so prayfully yeah, that God I gets, was... God gets angry, sure. and God gets jealous. You know, so those aren't no, no, always no, no. God's all about negative. Love and peace those and joy aren't and always well. That's what we're going to talk about. No, 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 that's no. what we're going to talk about. So this is a word that is so important to define in our lives. Well, also, I don't want to confuse it. You know, I want to make it very clear. You know that, that these things come against us. Yes. You know, yes. You know, and yes. That's, that's right. That's the right. real deal. That's right. So you know, so guys, if yes. if you're in the situ situations that I'm in, or dealing with things that I'm dealing with. You know, be a little bit more understanding. Also, because you know, we're understanding, and I don't mean tolerate, understanding. Yeah. Yes. yes. So we don't tolerate foolishness, and we don't tolerate these things, but we have to, you know, have some kind of yeah. grace somewhere, a balance. That's right. God's That's right. Word. You don't have to make any excuses. Um, there are yeah. so there's many words that we need to define in our lives, um, such as what is success to right. us. Uh, what is blessing? What is sin? Mm -hmm. You know the definition of sin, and 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 this word again, well, sin is love. In. Like, yeah, sin is in. Yes. So it's so important to get the definition. You know these definitions right. Yeah, when we were walking, because these are the most important things in life. When we were walking and talking, because sometimes God reveals things to us, mm -hmm. and and we were talking about you're the 
love. How, what is love to, to you? What, is God, yeah. what does lo God's love mean to you? What is, what is it defined for you? Right. Where, where in the Bible is it defined? Right, because it's, it's the most important thing in life. Love is the most important thing yeah. in life. So we must define right. it, mm -hmm. you know, for what it really is. So we're just going to compare the definition of love. Well, we know God uh, is love. Uh, yes, God is love. That's, that's the bottom all. line. That is the bottom line that God is love. So we're going to compare the definition of, of of love in terms of a the world and in terms oh, of yes, God. Fine. So no, I'm fine. Okay. No, I'm fine. So um, this was interesting. The love definition on Google. So this is the love Google definition, um, which I which I found very interesting. Um, it is uh, number one, an intense feeling of deep affection. Number two, a deep romantic or sexual attachment to someone. Mm. Number three, a personified <laughs> figure of love, often represented as Cupid. Number four, a great interest and pleasure in something. That is Google's, the defin Google's definition of love. Yeah, so basically, it's the carnality de definition of love, because they don't know God. Wow. So, I mean, just, you know. It sounds like church. It sounds very shallow. To me. Yeah. This is a very, very shallow but, definition yeah, of love. But, honey, but this is what love is to a lot of people. Well, I'll, get, I'll say this, is that I think that people confuse it, what love is. Mm -hmm. And because it's confused, they accept this carnality in their own personal lives. And I'm talking about believers. I'm not just talking about people who don't know Christ, mm -hmm. but people that know the Lord. And like like you were talking about Paul, who was, per, who was persecuted, he, he spelled out his persecutions, and many of them, most of them, the one that really disturbed me the most was the false brethren, one that calls himself a believer but really is not. You know, and I tell yeah. people all the time, I said, look, if you want to live in sin and you want to, live, you want the things of this world and you want to embrace the things of this right, world, right? And that's what you don't want. You don't want somebody to pretend right. love or pretend. It's pretentious. Be. Yeah, you don't want somebody pretending mm. to love. You want someone to truly exactly. love you. So another mm. incredibly important reason to, to know what love really is. Amen. And so we can only find that out through the Bible. That's right. Through the Bible, because God is love and and God is his word. So this is, I just came up with a few um, definitions, you know, especially according to this this Google definition of love of what the world defines as love. So number one, um, this, is, this is just what I have, and it could be a lot of other things, but this is what I have. Uh, number one, the world's definition of love, being nice and being positive. <laughs> Boy, that sounds like, so, yeah. It could include those things, but that's not the all in all, you Correct. know? So these things, um, uh, oh, this is my point. These these are things, there are things, sorry, there are things we are not supposed to love, according to the word of God. The world, mm -hmm. evil, mm -hmm. uh, sin. Mm -hmm. We're not supposed to love these things. Uh, in fact, we're supposed to hate them. Yeah. And we are to hate those things that God hates. Sure. So therefore, um, there are things we cannot speak nicely or positively about. There, there's just no way. You cannot speak nice and positive about the world. Well, to me, that's a very humanist, humanistic point of view yes. of love. So the, right. we, we're, so, we're, we're so, again, in the church of today, is that we, we're so calm. Yeah. We're, yes. we, we really don't want to talk about sin people. You know, we're, 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 we're afraid of it or something. We're afraid. I don't know what we're afraid of. But, and, and you know, and, and Jesus and, and his disciples and, and Paul, they majored in sin and exposing it. Oh, and exposing it, yeah. Yeah, and, and, and yeah. really, because you yeah. know why? Because it separates us from the Father. Yeah. It separates you from Jesus. That's right. So if, if you want to practice the sin, God, yes. in First John 3, it talks about the practice of sin. 
will, will lead you to death because yeah. you, you, you are the father of sin is the devil. It's not Jesus. That's right. So, so, so according to the world, yeah. love means not hurting someone's feelings. Mm -hmm. You know, we, again, it's a humanistic point, and it's about emotions, not about... And, I mean, it can mean that, sure. but not always. And, and we're going to talk about Rightfully that. Rightfully divided. Again, this, this song, um, What is love? Baby, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. But he's saying, What is love? Baby, don't hurt me. Baby, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me no more. So to him, love is not hurting him. <laughs> right. Not hurting his feelings. Yeah. Um, you know, so according to this. this hey, trust song, me, so, Veronica. Yeah. If, you, if, if anybody else has seen an Angelo and Veronica periscope, you've seen a lot of hurting going on. <laughs> All but, right, you, well, but you know what? I pray it's in kindness. So that you can get saved. So that you can be one of the few yeah. and go to heaven. That's yes, what this is all man. about. This is about your salvation. Yeah. It's about your spiritual welfare. It's about who you are in Christ and coming to the knowledge of Christ. And when you come to this, and that, that's why this message is strong, Veronica. Because I, mean, I, I think it's going to clarify. Yeah, I, I, I pray so. it clarifies people. And you know what? If, if we come off as passionate or excited or angry, or whatever it may be that you call it, I pray that you get something that challenges your faith, that challenges you to step up your game, so to speak. In other words, let's get, let's get yes. into this thing. Let's not fall back. Let's not be the, the Christians that just fall back and lay back and sleep on the couch. Oh, yeah, here we go. You're good at that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I broke a chair at work, by the way, but oh. so I... I I'm glad I didn't break that one. Wow. Okay. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. Yes. Yeah, so, so Romans 12, 10 no says, be kindly affectionate to one another. So mm. we do need to be kind. Right. We do need to show affection. Uh, a, a man should show affection towards his wife. A wife should show affection towards her husband. Um, so this is, this is uh, what... The, the Bible describes as brotherly love. Be kindly, affectionate to one another with brotherly love and honor giving preference to one another. So, so the, absolutely, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, and arguments. goodness, <laughs> see, see, self control. You know, just as you were speaking, you're supposed to operate in those things. As you spoke believers. that word, mm -hmm. I thought of my family when I was growing up. I was really called the angry family. I mean, we'd go to my grandmother's house, all my uncles and cousins and aunts would be there, and they would be get to these big arguments. Nothing but arguments. It's like, why are we coming over here? To yeah, argue and yeah, fight? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and that's what, we, that's what I grew up in. So I have to yeah. denounce the generational curses and break it in Amen. Jesus' name Amen. that that spirit that was on them is now not on me. And I don't claim it, and I reject it in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And that's what so you need to do to your own self. Like, you, you, honey, you, you really helped me. Amen. You know, you know, Veronica, she said, you know what? You need to speak it out of your mouth, your deliverance. You need to claim your, your healing and your deliverance from Jesus yeah. and denounce whatever it is that's coming at you that's taking you away from the likeness of God. That's right. God's word is living Amen. and powerful. So uh, Proverbs 27, but then there's, there's another side of love, you know, this other side uh, of, of kindness and affection. Because Proverbs 27, 5 says, open rebuke is better than love <clears throat> carefully concealed. Open rebuke is, is better than love carefully concealed. So, wow. so we should prefer to be corrected and rebuked, okay? Then, then this um, kindly, affectionate. You know what I'm saying? Because if this kindness and this affection is not going to um, correct certain things in our lives, will challenge then, us. Yeah, exactly. If it's not going to challenge us. Then, then what good is it? So Amos five fifteen says, "Hate evil, love good." So there's some things that we cannot speak well about, mm -hmm. and so. That's just an example. Sure. Romans 12, 9 says, let love be without hypocrisy. You know, let, don't let your love be hypocritical. Don't, uh, you know, we have this thing now in, in the United States of America, I think especially, where people are 
for lack of a better word, phony. <laughs> I mean, just That's phony. Mean. We just act like we love each other. That's so mean. And then we... No, no. We, what? We, like, we love each other in church. How are you doing? Right. Hey, how's it doing? Is your family okay? Oh, you're, not, you're right. starving to death? Oh, okay. It's good. Bless you. But the Bible says don't, don't bl bl you know, bless someone and then curse them in your heart. Mm -hmm. You know? So my don't my let God. your love be hypocritical. Again, abhor what is evil. It's okay to not speak to speak uh, not speak nicely or positively about things that are evil. Okay, we are supposed to hate what God yeah, hates, right. but we're labeled as I guess you know the world kind of labels us as complainers or not or being haters. negative haters, haters being negative yeah you know when we are absolutely not supposed Honey. to speak nicely or positively about the world evil or sin let me ask you a question why are we haters you know it's like can right. I ask a question I, I mean that really just just like yeah. boggles my mind I'm like wait a minute we're telling you the truth and you're calling me a hater See, right. you can do, you can sin, you can be, you can act any way you want to act. But the minute a pastor or a minister of the gospel corrects you in your life, you're not teachable. You're not reachable. Wow. You're not, wow. you're not preachable. Wow. You're unministerable. Unministerable. <laughs> because the problem is you're not yeah. willing to receive correction. Do you know what? That's that's something that I, I, I say, God, make me a, a believer that's willing to receive correction and you know and not get angry, not be offended, not yeah. then not make excuses yeah. why um I'm I'm the way I am. Yeah, yes, amen. So number two, um the world's definition of love, number two would be smooth talk or <laughs> sweet talk. Oh okay, something that we're so good at we'll here go that road, huh? in the United States. We're so good at smooth, smooth operators. Talk. Yes, being smooth operators. You know, no, smooth. want to get want to get people's business. Yeah. You know. Oh, yeah. So Romans sixteen eighteen for those uh, who are who are such for those who are such do not serve the, our Lord Jesus Christ, wow. but their own belly and by smooth words. Wow. And flattering speech deceive the hearts of the simple. Okay, so people who do not serve the Lord um, use smooth words, flattering speech in order to deceive the hearts of simple people. Okay, so Isaiah 30 10 says, Who says to the seers, do not see, and to the prophets, do not prophesy to us right things? Speak to us smooth things. Mm. Prophesy deceits. This is what the children of Israel were saying to the prophets, they're like, we don't, don't prophesy truth to us. Well, of course not. Speak to us smooth things, stuff that we want to hear. Yeah. Okay, so that's a direct reference to, to uh, uh, the itching ears mm. verse in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. You know, no, don't speak to us things that are right. Don't speak to us things that are true. Speak to us smooth things. You know, we want to hear what we want to hear. You know? That's exactly right. Um, and that that's, guys, that's wrong. That is wrong. All right? Proverbs 28, 23. Smooth words may hide. Now, this is a New Living Translation. Smooth words may hide a wicked heart. Mm. Okay? Just as a pretty glaze covers a clay pot. People may cover their hatred with pleasant words. Guys, people cover their hatred with pleasant words, but mm. their deceiving you mm -hmm. guys trying to just they're trying to deceive you trying to get your money okay honey or whatever or something else so they pretend to be kind don't put on that road. but don't believe them they pretend to be kind but don't believe them their hearts are full of many evils so guys we have to discern smooth talk we have to discern sweet you know yeah. saying people uh, whisk, you know, when somebody whispers sweet nothings, we have to discern that they might not have our better interest at heart. You know, they might funny. have an ulterior motive. And it's funny because I was sharing with somebody today. I said it is so easy, so easy to be offended with church. It is so yeah. easy to be offended with pastors. It is so easy. 
And the Bible's clear. You wouldn't be offended if you had knowledge of the Word of God. Because if you have yeah. knowledge of the Word of God, the Word of God tells you to be very, very selective who you call pastor in your life. You know, we're selective. That's why we have Bishop yeah. Bob and Bishop Glow because they're the real deal. Yeah. They're kind. They're loving. They're supportive. And yet, they'll, they're not afraid to tell us if we're off or wrong. You know, they never do that, but... but <laughs> I'm but, only kidding. Yeah, I would but when we receive it, yes, I would absolutely. Would. And my thing is, is that again, if you don't, you, if you're not careful, mm -hmm. and you find, wind up in a church like this, is a church over here, it's got thirty thousand members, and the pastor slept with seven women, no big deal, you know, no big problem, no, no problem. We, you know, we're not supposed to be angry though about that. See, that's where you're mistaken, my my brother and my sister. If you think that I'm going to stand here and not be angry at this wolf in sheep clothing and it deceiving many yeah. and drawing into the slaughter, then you're wrong. I am going to not put up with that kind of foolishness and, and I'm going to be passionate and I'm going to bring it to where I need to bring it. And I'm telling you, the Word of God will, will clearly tell you yeah. to be aware. They really, really need prayer and the people who attend, yeah. attend that church really, really yeah. need prayer. Yep. That's, that is That's um, reality. Okay, so number three. Um, definition of of worldly of of what the world defines as love flattery mm. Proverbs twenty nine five a man who flatters his neighbor spreads a net for his feet feet so somebody who is flattering you guys be careful because they are this is this is what the Bible is saying they're trying to trap you into mm -hmm. something. Okay, a man who flatters his neighbor spreads a net for his feet. Um, Jude 1 says uh, they are grumblers, complainers, walking according to their own lusts, and they mouth great swelling words. This is talking about false teachers. Flattering people to gain advantage. Okay, what? To gain what kind of advantage? To gain advantage over you. Okay, again, to... Uh, to to lord over you, or to get your money, or or to get something, to have all some ulterior motive. This is what flattery is is for. It's dishonest. All right, uh, Proverbs twenty eight twenty three. He who rebukes a man will find more favor afterward than he who flatters with mm -hmm. the tongue. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're better off rebuking a man. You will find more favor with the Lord. Okay, afterward, you will have to find more favor, not right away, but you'll find more favor than if you flatter somebody, okay, uh, flatter somebody to just, you know, get in with them, get in with their group or, or to get something from them. Guys, it, it is wrong. It is dishonest. And I know that that is the way that we live life here mm. in, the, in, in America and in the world. This is how we get ahead, so to speak. I, I know so many people who I truly believe have gotten ahead in in the world, yeah. you know, yeah. because of flattery. They flatter everyone. Okay. You know, I just I, you know, I don't want to go back. I just want okay. I just want to bring the scripture to First Timothy five twenty four. Remember that some men, even pastors, lead sinful lives because we're men, right? And everyone knows it. In such situations, you can do something about it. But in other cases, only the judgment day will reveal the terrible truth. Okay? In the same way, everyone knows how much good some pastors do, but sometimes their good deeds aren't known until long after, like Derek Prince. Yeah, yeah. You know, real men of God. I just want to say, I don't know what version that is. That's, uh, you know. um, but uh, a pastor who is practicing sin mm -hmm. should not be a pastor and you should not be at his church one who practices sin i'm not saying that they need to live perfect lives none of us can live perfect lives no. but we uh pastors no, ministers not. and leaders in the church have to be above reproach mm -hmm. you know so i just want to say that and, and, um, you know and again not to major on all of the, the wolves that jesus warned us about people. See, there again, 
We say it all the time. This read your to, Bible. This is how to spot them. Right. Read what? Yeah. What did you say? They, they, when we started this yes, ministry, they, read they, your they Bible. They can be nice people. They can be very positive. They can do a lot of smooth talk, sweet talk, <laughs> a lot of flattery. Yeah, many you know? nice haircuts. You know, you know. Yep. So, uh, like nice clothes. That's right. That's fancy right. Fancy cars. Nice houses. Yep. Yep. Nice jets. Helicopters. Yeah, see, that's, well. That's such a trap. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you guys, do not, not sow me. your seed into sin. Yeah, yeah. Just like radio, I tell them, stop promoting sin That's and right. radio will get better. That's right. But they continue to promote sin. And that's yeah. why the church, then they, we, we, we go by the hit parades mm-hmm. of the radio. We go, oh, we're going to do that new song, blah, 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 blah. But you don't do any research about the artist. You don't do any research about the, the music. Okay, and then you sing that counterfeit music in your church. Yes, the Bible says, sing a new song unto the Lord. Bingo. Sing a new song unto in me. other words, people, what is your sound? Every church should have its own sound. It shouldn't be, oh, we want to sound like Joe Olstein, or we want to sound like T.D. Jakes, or we want to sound like, you know, this. Who are you? Where's your sound? You know what? Seek God for your sound because there's a sound that resonates and it's it's powerful when you sing a new song unto the Lord and things will begin to change and, and the atmosphere will change. Be don't be led by the hit parade, be led by the Bible, be read, led by the Spirit of the Lord, the Holy Spirit that guides us into all truth. Yeah, yeah. That's what you want to be led by. Yes. Okay, number four, the world's definition of Love. Number four, lust. Ooh. Lust. There's a song that says, There's a thin line mm. between love and hate. But they really mean lust. There's a thin line between lust is, and is hate. Is that Pastor and, that, and that I believe. No. 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 Oh, whatever. I don't, okay. I don't know. No, no, no. Um, so, so, anyway, lust and love. There's a thin line. Between lust and hate. Well, lust is hate. Yes. So lust is not love. Come on. Okay? And this is something that the world is so adamant about that lust is love. Lust is not love according to God's word. Okay? And lust quickly turns to hate. Love quickly turns to hate after you get whatever you're lusting for. Wow. You will hate whatever. When you get what you lust for, you will hate it. So, because uh, in 2 Samuel 13, 5, Amnon, which was one of David's children, mm-hmm. sons, um, uh, <clears throat> raped his sister. Uh, and I believe her name, oh, I believe her name was Tam- Tamar. Uh, then Amnon... Forgive me if I got that wrong. Then uh, Amnon hated her exactly. This was after he raped her. Uh, then Amnon hated her exceedingly. He wanted her, wanted her, wanted her, wanted her, okay? Then forced himself upon her, mm. okay? And then hated her exceedingly. Wow. So that the hatred, it says so that the hatred with which he hated her was greater than the love with which he had loved her and really he didn't love her at all. You know, if he forced himself upon her. And Amnon said to her, arise, be gone. He said, get out of here, get out. And he threw her out. After forcing himself, after raping her, forcing himself upon nice. her. And then he just hated her. Wow. Hated her. So guys, lust is not Love, it is really, it really truly is hate. Honey. Okay? And I believe that's a major problem. That's a major problem Mm -hmm. in adultery. Okay. No, no. Oh, oh. Lust. Oh, lust, yes. Because we're lusting after something we think is better than what we already have. Yes. Like I hear people, oh, it's okay to look, just don't touch. No. No. It's Mm-mm. whatever you put in your eye gate will, yeah. will go into your spirit. It's already adultery if you lust. Jesus said it's already adultery if you look at a, 
uh, look upon a woman mm -hmm. or a man mm -hmm. uh, with lust in your heart. Mm -hmm. So, no. So what I'm saying is, mm -hmm. you know, we're hearing these stories of Christian, and I think that's the great de uh, uh, demise of Christian faith mm -hmm. is the marriage is being destroyed. Yes. Because yes. of lust. Yes. Not yeah. anything else but lust. Because yeah. you don't tell me, oh, I met my soulmate. Oh, really? <laughs> I was on an airplane and I, this is a pastor talking. I met my soulmate on the plane. I told him my whole life story. And he told me his whole life story. And now I left my husband and, you know, and he left his wife. Now we're married. Now where is that in the Bible, no pastor? Way. No way. No way. Where is that in the Bible? No way. No, and you know what? People go to that person's church. This guy go to this woman's church in Florida, and, and they receive the adulterous spirit that's on that lady. Wow, wow. I'm sorry, wow. people. You know what? You can yeah. say whatever you want. Oh, angels, he's angry. No, not. I'm angry at the, the fact of the matter that, that these people are being lied to on a weekly basis. Lie, lie, lie. And we do nothing about it. We say nothing about it because we're afraid, oh, they, wouldn't, they may not bring us in to minister the, you know, the, I may get, not get my honorarium if I don't, if I don't, go, you know, if I'm not, if I'm not, if I'm no. not nice or if, I, if I'm exposing stuff that, that is obvious. And you know, people, yeah. don't take my word for We've it. Go online and find it. Over the praise of man. You know? Praise God. So 1 Thessalonians 4, 3 through 5, for this is the will of God mm. your sanctification mm. that you should obtain from sexual immorality that each of you know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor not in passion of lust mm. so all sexual immorality is lust okay and we are not and that is not ever God's will Okay, sexual immorality is never God's will. And I have to read this, this other scripture, uh, Romans 1, 23. Likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust mm. for one another, men mm. with men committing what is shameful, and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error which was due. The Bible describes homosexuality as lust. One of those, sure. one of those lusts sure. that uh, is under the... And adultery. Uh, Yes, absolutely. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. And fornication. Absolutely. Any sexual yes. sin. And masturbation. Absolutely. Is lust. Just somebody just read that and I'm like, be, yeah. be careful. There are children watching, my friend. Yeah, that's right. Uh, that's and right. my thing is that. Respect. Yeah, right. Uh, that's right. My thing is that we have to, be, you know, again, people, you know, the church yeah. don't want to hear this. Because we show. say they this. Don't hear it. Just, we say this for the same reason that Jesus says this. God is love and he he warned us of these things because he loves us. And this is the same reason we bring these things. Because it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't, we don't gain advantage in any way sharing these things. We gain, what, what, do, we no, gain? what, what do we get out of it? <laughs> right. I'll tell you what we get out of it. Telling you these it. things. We, but we, we obey gain, God. Right, an eternal reward and that's, what but, we are living for, and, and eternal I, reward. And honey, I'm going to say this, I'm going to add, because God gave it to me this morning. Yeah. And a lot of people are using excuses mm -hmm. why they can't go after the truth. Yeah. Because they love their sin more than they love God. Yeah. yeah. And they, you know what? And a lot of other Christians are going, well, I don't like that Pentecostal faith because they're all liars and they're all hypocrites. And they're, and they're, they're uh, Protestant. Protestant faith. Yeah, Protestant faith. Protestant faith. You know, non-denominational churches, mm -hmm. a lot of pastors, like, you know, like, uh, you know, right, whatever, uh, Derek Prince, mm -hmm. you know, different men of God. There's a lot of men of God. The Bible's clear. It says, uh, beware of wolves in sheep clothing, right? So, but that, God never gave me an excuse why not to follow after his word. You're making excuses why you can't follow the faith. And you're saying, well, because I'm not going to follow the faith because that man's a liar. Well, okay, since you know he's a liar, then don't go to his church. That's Find right. a church that does, the pastor That's doesn't right. lie, that he ain't sleeping with seven women. That's right. That go, there, are, there are wonderful churches yes, to go there to. Are. That's Come right. on, man. We're one of them. That's right. <laughs> Praise God. You know, we're you look, one of them. And you know what? Yeah. 
This is the result of yeah. today's church, Veronica. Yes. We have no audience. <laughs> You know what? I don't need an audience. I care about these people listening. So, all right. God's God's definition of love. Mm. Because there is 500 uh, uh, scriptures with the word love in it. Mm -hmm. Okay? In the word of God. I mean, love is everything right. to God. I mean, and don't the define Bible it. is full of love, not full of hate, as the world says it and, is. And don't define it as just an emotion. Exactly. Humanistic yes. Point. So we're going to just say, right I'm just going to tell you a few things. I mean, God, I mean, love is so all encompassing. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure I'm missing a lot of things here, but this is just what I have today for this short, uh, this short message. God's definition of love. Number one, patience, mm. patience. It says in Genesis 29, 20, so Jacob served seven years for Rachel and they, and they seemed only a few days to him because of the love he had for her. And I think he ended up, I think he ended up serving 14 years for Rachel. Is that, is that not right? Yeah. But it seemed only a few days to him because he loved her that much mm -hmm. that he was going to wait for her. And that's, that's amazing. That's an amazing story of love. So 1 Corinthians 13, 4. This is out of the New Living Translation. And um, guys, we all know this, this scripture, or most of us. Love is patient. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing it says. Love is patient. Amen. I mean, that's like, wow. Love is patient. <laughs> right. Love is patient and kind. Mm -hmm. Love is not jealous. Mm -hmm. We're talking about not the not the God kind of jealousy. Um, love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not mm. demand its own way. It is not irritable. Wow. It is not irritable and it keeps no record of being wronged. It does not rejoice about an injustice. But it rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Again, we cannot rejoice about injustice. We, we rejoice when the truth wins out. Love never gives up, never loses faith, is always hopeful, and endures through every circumstance. Prophecy and speaking in unknown languages and special knowledge will become useless, but love will last forever. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? It's incredible. Incredible, Veronica. So, awesome. so God is love, and, and one of the very important attributes of love according to God's word is patience so I gotta work on that <laughs> we all do patience honey oh my goodness. you know what we're not wow. perfect we're not claiming to be perfect yeah. we're we're just after the truth we're after God we're after Christ we're after his word so that it, it becomes evident in our lives every day that it'll make us better make us yeah. stronger Make us, you know, the, the, you know what? Exercise your Christian faith. Build up your faith, man. It's like, you know what? If you're, if you're not getting built up where you're at, then you, you do, you're doing something wrong. You, you, you got to change some things up. You got to shift some things up. And you have to get away from certain things to make you grow. And again, you must study and research the Word of God for yourself. You must... Read the Bible for yourself. Do not there you go, depend baby. on your pastor or, or a preacher. I heard this Do guy tell me, I, said, I, said, why you, I knew this guy was a wolf in sheep clothing. Yeah. So I told my friend, why are you going back to that church? And he goes, oh. well, because I'm going to hear the word of God. I'm like, are you a sheeple? Are you that dumb? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. You're, 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 you're that ignorant. Yeah. Of the devil's devices. The Bible says that men, they are men who twist and pervert the word of God. Come yeah. on, for their purposeful gain. Yeah, that's right. They, you'll know them by their fruits, fruits. people. Yes. Open your eyes. You know what? We're, we're not here to tear anybody down. But we here, we are here to expose what is not of God. Amen. Amen. What is not of Jesus. All right, number two, God's, God's definition of love. Correction. Oh, no, 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 no. Correction. No, he doesn't correct yeah. anybody. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Sorry. Well, then you're not his son or his daughter. Yeah, there you you're go. Not his, you're not a child of God. Proverbs 3, 12, for whom the, love Lord, whom the Lord loves, he corrects, just as a father 
the son in whom he delights. So the Lord corrects those that he loves. Revelation 3.19, as many as I love, Jesus said this, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Okay? Yeah, you, you don't correct your children, then you hate them. That's right, exactly. So, I mean, it's just following suit what Christ is saying. He's not saying beat you up, but he wants you to grow in the things of God, in things of God, in the kingdom. Now, this is really interesting. Leviticus 19, 13 through, uh, through, I'm sorry, oh, 17 and 18, actually. And this is the Living Bible version. I had never seen this scripture before. This is powerful. It says, don't hate your, this is like the definition of loving your brother. This is the absolute definition. It says, don't hate your brother, but at the same time, rebuke anyone who sins. And don't let him get away with it, or you will be equally guilty. Don't seek vengeance, don't bear a grudge, but love your neighbor as yourself. Guys, this is God's definition of loving your brother. It's in Leviticus 19, no, 17, no, hold and 18. On. Hold, hold time out. You're yes. judging. You're judging. I'm judging. <laughs> you know, get the log out of your eye, you know. I mean, wow. you know, you know, judge least you can judge. Oh, okay. You know, I mean, it's funny how many non-Christians know that scripture. Yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> they need to learn this one, Leviticus 19, <laughs> 17, 18. There you That's go, my love. awesome. Lord. That is incredible. Incredible <laughs> definition of loving your brother. It it's says, up. don't hate your brother. But you, at the same time, rebuke anyone who sins. Don't let him get, with it, get away with it, or you'll be equally guilty. Don't seek wow. vengeance. Don't bear a grudge. But love your neighbor as yourself, for wow. I am Jehovah. You know, people, yeah. I, I just want to say this again. You know, we come and we preach this, the word of the Lord. But we're not, again, we, it starts with us. My wife and I, I know, my, I know me personally, but I know my wife does it as well. We examine ourselves in the faith. We examine ourselves and say, are we, are we really Christians? Yeah. Amen. Are we walking this thing out right? Am I saying the right, you know, am I speaking God's language? Examine yourself to see whether you are right. in the faith. On the faith. Yeah. And and so, you know, you can't come back to Angelo Rock and say, well, oh, they're judging me and they're hating me. You know what? That's your own personal view. And it's a good excuse. We, ju we judge ourselves. There you go. We judge ourselves. God says, day. I judge those outside the walls. Yeah. But we're to judge those inside the walls. In other words, there's an accountability people as believers. In other words, iron sharpens iron. You know, how, how can we get better and be better witnesses of the gospel if we're not ch chiseling each other? If we're not going back and forth saying, you know what? Hey, man, you, you were a little harsh over here. Oh, you know, like I received that correction when somebody said, you know, you come up as angry or harsh. I receive it and say, you know what, Lord, make me better. That's I, you know, I don't get angry and offended. Just like, get me, make me better, God. Yes, yes. Well, that, that's what this next scripture is saying, Proverbs 9, 8. Um, but do I don't not, want God to call me a coward. Do not correct coward. a scoffer, lest he hates you. Rebuke a wise man, and he will love you. So we have to um, be choosy mm -hmm. about who we correct and rebuke, mm -hmm. because a scoffer will hate you for it. But a wise man will love you for it. Mm -hmm. Okay? So let's just make that very... So don't go out, you know, rebuking everybody, you know. Um, but find people who want truth and, and want uh, wisdom. Amen. Okay? And, um, <laughs> and always do it in love. Sure. All right. So number three, God's definition of love, obedience. Oh. That's God's language of love. This is how we prove our love to God. Right. Through obedience. This is all throughout the Bible. All throughout the Bible. Mm -hmm. Exodus 26. But showing mercy to thousands. To those who love me and keep Come my on. commandments. Amen. John 14, 15 says, if you love me, Jesus said, if you love me, Obey me. keep my yeah. commandments. Yeah. John 14, 21, Jesus said, He who has my commandments and keeps them, mm. it is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to uh, him. I got to go here. You know, I saw a Christian artist on, on uh, TBN. 
She was the host on the show. I love the Lord. I'm so in love with the Lord. I'm so in love with him. And I'm so in love with my Freemasonry too. But but I mean, but it was like, wait a minute. It's like, wait a minute. Come on, people. Who do you love? Do you love your fraternities? Yeah. Or do you love Jesus? That's right. Jesus said, take no oaths with us. With a, with man, yep. don't pledge any oaths with man, only with him. You cannot serve two masters. That's right. That's exactly yeah. right. We'll, and folks, we'll love the one and you will hate the other. If you don't know anything about fraternities, go do your homework, Christians. Be vigilant. Don't sit there and go, oh, they're 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 angry and they're offended. I just no, did not. A, a video this past week, a Bible study called Imposters in the church about Masonic infiltration. Mm. So please go back and watch that. It is on YouTube. It's good stuff. And um, it's going to explain, uh, you It'll know, help hopefully you. a lot of things, you know, a lot of, Honey, it will answer a lot of questions. It's about helping people. That's right. Why yes. would we want to say something to get a reaction or to, 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 to anger you so much that you fall away from the faith? But again, if you're not willing to receive correction, then you can't be a believer. Yeah, you can't be a believer. It's impossible. Because you cannot so you, be a child of God. No, then go serve who you want to serve. Yeah. But don't call yourself, that's what Paul was dealing with. Paul was dealing with the fake Christians, and he exposed them. Yes, he did. And they, and they were like, oh, 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 what was this guy doing? Okay? Yep. So Deuteronomy 7, 9 says, Therefore know that the Lord your God, he is God, the faithful God who keeps covenant and mercy for thousands, for a thousand generations with those who love him and keep his commandments. Again, loving him and keeping his commandments are one. You cannot separate the two. Loving him and keeping his commandments are inseparable. Mm. Okay? So this is not any kind of... <laughs> no, we don't do that. So those things are inseparable. Loving him, keeping his commandments are synonymous. This is how we prove our love to God. That's good. Okay? That's good stuff. So God's another God, another definition of, of um, the Bible definition of love. Number four. Mm. And this is one of the most important things because this is the ultimate proof of God's love to us. And that is sacrifice. Sacrifice. It, um, John 15, 13 says, Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. You can have no, no, there's no greater love than laying down your life. Amen. Romans 5, 8, But God demonstrates his love, uh, his own love toward us, in that we were, while, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Okay, this is how he demonstrates his love <clears throat> by dying a, a, a excruciating death on the cross for us. Okay, so one John three sixteen by this we know love because he laid down his life for us. We also ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. We have to lay down our lives. If we want to follow God and we say we truly love him, we have to be willing to lay down our lives for God and for our brethren. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? You know, I, it's I, not. as you're, it's spe as you're speaking that word, I just got a, a hint, yes. I, an inkling, a, a inkling of what a lot of people who may be on Periscope saying, these people for real? They really believe this stuff? They really believe God's word? Well, I, I'm going to tell you something, my brothers and my sisters. If, if there are my brothers and sisters out there. Uh, we take this word literally. Yes, amen. And you know what? If, it, if, we're, if we're in error, then the Bible's in error. And I can tell you right now, they have, yeah. the Bible has 2,000 years of history, and nobody can prove it wrong. Nobody. Yeah. And if we're in error, may God correct us. Correct. You know? Exactly. We're, we're not above yeah. reproach. That's right. Amen. All right. So if you want to learn how to love, how many of you want to learn how to love? I want to learn Come how on. to love more. Come on. You know? Yeah. So this is how to love. And honey, this is how again, love. again, let's not major on calling love. Yes, kindness is part of love. But when you, all you can see is, oh, 
then are kind. Well, what's kind to you? What is that emotion? What is that? Does that emotion does it just encompass the way somebody speaks, the way somebody responds, the way somebody? I mean, we again we make it a a, a humanistic yeah. Yeah. approach to what God is saying. No, I am love. So if God is love, it's not humanistic. It's spiritual. It's Amen. deeper. It's yes, deeper. that's it. It's not humanistic. It's right. not defined mm. or confined by human terms. And honey, that's... It is spiritual. Come on, baby. And you know what? It is spiritual. That's why... Because God is spirit. I'm going to go here. Yeah. That's why marriage yeah. to one person is very powerful. Yes. <laughs> because it's a covenant. It is yeah. not an emotion, yes. people. It's a spiritual thing. It's a covenant. And that's covenant. what God said, that he keeps covenant and mercy. He keeps his covenant. He keeps his Come word on. to us. Good stuff. So that's baby. why he's saying, you know what? You need to keep my word, you know? Because I keep my word to you. God never goes back on his word. But I love, he's no liar. That's right. Amen. It's impossible for our God to lie. Impossible. Amen. So let's get that clear right, up, right off the that's bat. That's right. That's Again, right. that's a little yeah, thing. The Bible is absolute truth. Absolutely. Hallelujah. Okay. Yes, absolutely. And, and you know what? You can, you can choose to believe any other method of what you think the Bible says, but the Bible is very clear. That's right. It's not, it's not cloudy. Oh, I don't understand it. You don't understand it because you're not reading it. That's, That's why you right. don't understand it. That's right. If, you, that, if, you, if, if a kid walked into, into school, said, I don't understand the English language. Well, did you, take, did, you say, did you take an English course? Well, I don't understand it. Well, then you'll never understand it if you don't take yeah. the English course. Yeah. So go, step into the Bible. Open yeah. it up. Yeah. It's not that you hard, people. All you need is your Bible. That's it. And a dictionary, preferably 1820 that's why Webster's Dictionary. That's why it's in every hotel. That's a cool. Bible. Yes. You can pull that's it out you need. and read it. That's all you need. That's all right. you need. Right. Amen. And ask the Lord to fill you with the Holy Spirit. Exactly. That way you will really understand the Word of God even more. So, um, learning how to love. How to love. How to love. Learning to love means getting back to God. And I'm going to let you guys know how you can learn love, how you can learn to love, and how you can learn this perfect love, and how you can receive Amen. this perfect love. Okay, the reason that love is quenched, the reason that love goes away, is diminished. The reason that love is quenched, okay, is because of one reason, sin. Hmm. Because Matthew 24, 12 says, And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. Yeah. Because lawlessness or sin abounding, the love of many will go away. So this is the reason for love growing cold. Mm -hmm. It's because of sin and hard-heartedness. Okay? Yeah, I mean, sin, sin makes your heart hard. hard. You and know? sin is in. Yes. It is. People. All right. So, so that, that is the reason to sum it up. This is how love is quenched because of sin. Now, when we reconcile to God through repentance, then and only oh, then no, 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 no. can we truly no. learn what love is no, and how to love. That's not love. No. no. Oh, no? Is no, that? repenting okay. is not. No. Oh, repenting okay. is mean. Not what it says here. No, repenting is hateful. Oh, oh repenting is, oh, you're angry. Oh, okay. Jesus is so, angry. Revelations 2, 4, this is what Jesus said. Nevertheless, I have this against you, that you have left your first love. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen. Repent and do the first works, or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place. Unless you repent. Wow. Wow. That's it. Wow. So repentance people, is what gets us back oh, to love, sure. having love in our hearts. That's, having love. that's <laughs> if you can yes. see it, that's in red. Yes. That was Jesus. That wasn't anybody else but Jesus. 
And he said it in Luke 13, 3. He said it twice. That's right. Repent, repent or likewise what? That's it. Perish. perish. Repent oh. or perish. Well, was he angry when he said that? Was he Two angry? Well, what was his emotional state at that point? When he turned over the tables, wait on. When he turned over the tables, was he was he to be nice? Oh, I'm not angry. No. He did everything. He was pissed. Out of Plain love. English. He was I'm mad. I was just gonna say he did everything out of love. He was mad. <laughs> no, yeah, but he was still angry. Yes, absolutely. Come on, absolutely. people, get real. One John four eight. For he who does not love God, I'm sorry. He who does not love. Guys, if you don't know how to love, then you do not know God. For God is love. The Hallelujah. only way to learn how to love mm -hmm. is to know God. That's the only way to learn and how, we're gonna how to know, love. Honey? God is love. How are we going to know? Yeah. Yes. By, by repenting. Reading, yeah, and by reading repenting. his word. Yes. That's right. And, and asking yes. him into your heart. And really, you know what? The only change, you know what, again, I say it week after week, the only peace you're ever going to have is from Jesus. The only peace I ever get in my life is when I'm alone with the Father. That's the yeah, real peace. Because yep. everything else is always, oh, bills and, and stress and, and money and jobs and people and things and stuff. And no peace. Yeah. No peace. Yeah. And, and guys, things cannot love you. Ooh. Inanimate objects Ooh. objects cannot love you. Can this house love me? Movies, media, they cannot love you. Okay, the things of this world will never love you. Oh. They will never love you. That's good. Yeah. That's good. I mean, we try to get um, satisfaction and we say, oh, I love this. Well, it doesn't love you back. You know, I go to the mall, I'm like, oh, I love this. Well, it doesn't love me back. Wow. It, it cannot love me back. That's good. That's it good, It cannot Veronica. love you. Things, your home cannot love you. Your car cannot love you. Okay? You can love them, but they don't love you back. My mother died back in 2013, and there's her car on the driveway. Yeah. It's not in heaven with her. That's right. You know? And, and so, I mean. We have to remember that. These things goodness. that we love, so-called you know, quote unquote, love cannot love us back. Yeah. Yeah. So. You know, it's amazing to me how you, our door, our, excuse me, our door is wide open mm -hmm. for people to come in and to receive the word of the Lord. Yeah. And, you know, even with all the success we had in music, there's not one person at that door. There's not one person in this, in this house except for me, you, and the Holy Spirit. And I, you know what? I love the fact yeah. You know, of all these preachers that preach on I feel more successful now. <laughs> no, no, but a lot of these preachers are led by the emotions of people. Yeah, yeah. So they go and they speak to people and they, and they get all hyped up by the response of the right, audience. they're moved by the people, yeah. Right, they're not moved by the Holy Spirit. They're being moved yeah. by the response of the people. Yeah. Now, and I promise you, you and I preach this, and it'll be just as quiet as it is in here. <laughs> because that's where we are in the state of the church. But you know what? Yeah. I don't believe that we can step up, people, Amen. that we can really discover what love is, what love really is, really is. and that yes. we can really grab a hold of our faith, and we can really step away from our sin and repent and turn from Amen. it and never return yes. back to it. Uh, 2 John 2, guys, if you want to learn about love, go to, well, go First Corinthians 13, but also First. John, the book of John, 1 John, and also 2 John 6 says, this is love. It says, this is love. Guys, this is it. This is love that we walk according to his commandments. <laughs> this is love. That's love, walking according to his commandments. So if you want to do that, if you want to follow the Lord, then just pray this this quick prayer with us right now. But you know, honey, also, you know, what I was gonna say, you said, okay. it says love your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love your neighbor as you love yourself. And these two commands fulfill love. Fulfill love. love. Right, fulfill They fulfill love. love. Correct. Yes, you know, loving so. the Lord with all your heart, soul, and mind, loving your brother as yourself, that's it. So that's the end that all means love all. your black brother, love your white brother, your Indian brother, your Amen. Asian brother, love that's your right. Muslim brother, love them all. 
love them. And see, that's one of the things that I hate that Freemasonry and fraternities oh. and sororities do, that they separate yep. the races. Yep. I mean, I just, it, it, I abhor it, that. Yeah, right. Those, you know? those, such lives matter. Yeah. Yeah. No, all lives matter, people. Yeah. And that's just... That if anybody ever did their research every, on that, every life matters. Well, well right. Every and what I'm saying matters. is to, to Jesus, mm -hmm. but if you're serving the devil, then your culture matters. Yeah. yeah. See, because you're you're now a cultural Christian, not a spiritual one. So, Veronica, let's step yes, into the prayer. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. So, guys, just pray this quick prayer with me. If you want to be reconciled to God. If you want that love back in your heart, then you know that your heart has grown hard. Guys, you know this, you know this. Search your heart and know if your heart has become hard. If you have a difficult time loving and receiving love, then your heart might be hardened by sin. But now is the day, today is the day of mm. salvation that you can get back with God, that you can be reconciled with Him. So just um, pray these quick words with me. Dear Lord, I come to you today. I come to you today. And I ask you, I ask you for forgiveness, for forgiveness of, my sins. of my sins. God, I repent, God, I repent of, my sins. of my sins. So I will turn the other way. So I will turn the other way. Run the other way. Run the other way. From practicing sin for practicing sin god please god, rebuke me rebuke me chasten me chasten me because i want to be your child because i want to be your child i want to be a child of god i want to be a child and of god. i want to be loved by you i want to be loved by you greater uh, love has no man than this no love has great, no greater love than this than to lay down one's life. Than to lay down one's and that life. is what you did for me, Jesus. And that's what you did for you me, Jesus. You laid down your life for me. You laid your so life you down have for me. proved so your, you prove love your love to me. To me. So me. I receive your love. So I receive your love. By faith. By faith. God, and I receive salvation. So I receive salvation. By grace. By grace. Today. Right at this very moment, right this in very Jesus' moment. name, hallelujah. In Jesus, glory, glory hallelujah. to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, God.